do I find the sea that I often spend my playing as well as working hours in it. But sometimes a turnabout from pleasure to peril can occur in a few minutes. Like that uh, beautiful day that I was hunting abalone with my friends off Lorient Cliff. Above us, an inner tube held a net and waited for our catch. Twenty feet below, Doug, his wife Mella, and I were swimming happily, enjoying the beauty of the sea. I was leading the way as we hunted along the submerged face of the cliff. We had no way of knowing that within minutes, we would be the ones who were hunted by the world's most savage monster, the killer whale. It was easy to see that Doug and Mala were very much in love. And if I hadn't been leading the party, I'm afraid that they would have forgotten all about Abalone. I was enjoying the search very much. There, I spotted a couple of big ones. I called Doug and Mallet to pry off the shells and would have looked for more. But a glance at my underwater watch told me that we had only a few minutes of air left. was a narrow entrance to an underwater cave. While they were busy with the abalone, I turned to examine the cave and found that it was small, without air, and held nothing but a few frightened fish. Meanwhile, my friends had done a good job on the shells and were pleased with their catch. gave a signal, and we surfaced to the net. Oh, when we did ten! I don't know At how least ten pounds, anyway, huh? <laughs> Mike, you see the way she buy that air boss? Sure hate to have her come after me with an air boss. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's quite a muscle you got there. What's the matter? Shark, that's a killer whale. Look at that high curved fin. Oh, God! The wolf. Can't see it, but they can feel vibrations. Maybe we can make it ashore, huh? Now, that's a sheer wall. Maybe he won't attack. Maybe he will. You never know. That cave I was just in down below. He's too big to get in after us. We only have six or seven minutes to take our chance. Come on now. Feet first. No splash. As we hurried to the cave, I again led the way along the same cliff. But this time it seemed like an entirely different place. The height of that fin told me that the killer must be at least 30 feet long. I hoped that he was after other game, but I knew that killer whales preferred warm-blooded prey, and often human beings. As I motioned Doug and Mella into the cave, I was still hoping that the whale hadn't noticed us. But he had coming at us like a giant torpedo. Fortunately, I'd figured right. The cave opening was too small for him. But we had just slipped out of his reach, temporarily. I wondered how long the whale would wait outside for us. I knew that in all the oceans, there is nothing faster, more cunning, or more savage than these killers. But they often even capsize boats. Would this one find a way to get us? Mm -hmm. 
I wondered how long our air would last. I remembered that these whales were known to kill anything, even sperm whales three times their size, and that they couldn't be bluffed or frightened. Doug estimated that he had six minutes of air left. Mala probably had less. We were in a deadly game of cat and mouse. And the cat was 30 feet long, and we were the mice. The killer seemed to be circling away. Was this just a trick, or had he gone? I signaled Doug and Mella not to move while I slipped out to investigate. I was taking a desperate chance, but in a few minutes, we would all run out of air. I decided to swim cautiously around a slight bend in the cliff before surfacing for a look. It was then that Doug made a fatal mistake. Knowing that Mala was almost out of air was more than he could bear. He disregarded my instructions and left the cave. I supposed that he'd hoped to swim to the boat and bring back another diving lung. He came up by the net. He looked around and saw nothing. Then he decided to swim for the boat. When he saw the whale, it was too late. The whale passed under him and turned around. Doug swam for the boat with all his might. But it was hopeless. The killer took him in one gulp. Meanwhile, I swam back to the cave. I hadn't seen the whale or Doug. Mala had no air left, so I gave her some of mine. I figured that we could reach the surface if we shared the air in my tank, and if the killer didn't get us. We moved up as quietly as we could, passing the mouthpiece back and forth. Then I saw something which told me that we would probably be safe porpoises, one of the favorite victims of the killer whale. My message to the Coast Guard set in motion a vast operation. Within seconds, warnings were radioed to all coastal installations in the region. From all directions, Coast Guard boats and helicopters converged on the area.
every search device was used. Thousands of unsuspecting bathers had to be warned, and countless small craft at sea. One small boat had already been attacked, with one man overboard and missing. Let a cry for help. In 50 years at sea, I've seen killer whale a dozen times, so it's up. Bad, vicious. They ought to be destroyed, every last one of them. And with this one prowling the coast, no skin diver or a small boat is going to be safe. In the last seven years, I was mate to Bob McKay on his motor schooner. That was the days when Shark Liver brought a good price. Basking Shark. Some of them 40 footers. More than once, we'd almost had our shark boated when the carcass be torn away by one of them killers. Torn, my boy. <laughs> my son. Lars, I'm going to find that killer whale, the one at Loring Cliff, and I'm going to kill him. It's a big ocean. Even the Coast Guard hasn't been able to sight him. Maybe that's because they've been looking for him where he's been, not where he's going to be. Well, you said yourself he was headed for open water. The cup's been very heavy this year on the offshore islands, especially at St. Dennis. I know. You know what that means? Sure. Herring in big shoal coming in early. And big herds of seal coming in, too. Yeah, they've always followed the herring. That's where they're most likely to be feeding, at St. Dennis. Because of the rocks. Isn't that right, Lars? Sure. Seal meat. That's what the killer whale likes best. That's where I'll find him. Off the St. Dennis rocks, raiding the sea herd. Well, how am I going to get him when I find him? My 38 carbine won't even dent him. How about a harpoon gun? The one we used on Bob McKay's boat to take shark. You got one? I'll get it. Bob McKay still has it down at Fort Clement. He lives with his son down there. Wait. I'll get the one. Lars, I'm going with you. Wait a minute. Now. Wait. Sit down, Lars. There's no job for you. Oh, I know. Now you, Mala. I'm going to go over and get our boon gun at Bob McKay's right now. By tomorrow morning, I'll be on my way to St. Dennis Island. Mike, I'm going with you tomorrow. No, Mala. I'm going for us, Lars. At seven o'clock the next morning, we were almost ready to shove off for St. Dennis Island. Old Bob McKay had loaned me his harpoon gun, and his son Will had offered to come with me to help. I gladly accepted, because although I've used many weapons, I never shot one like this before. Isn't that Doug Anderson's cruiser? Ah, it's his widow's now. What about this gun? Did it work all right? When was the last time you fired it? A few weeks ago. We take it down to the beach and fire it every once in a while. Pa gets a kick out of it. He designed it. See? Explosive shell fits in the head. The barbs attach to the head. They both fit onto the end of the harpoon shaft. Now, when the head penetrates, it explodes. Now, what's the, uh, what's the range of this gun? Extreme, 100 feet. You've got to get closer to get any penetration. Explode this anywhere near its vital organs, we're going to have to drive this thing through five or six feet of bone and muscle. And we should fire from 50 feet. Still in this gear, huh, Will? Right. W-H-105, Mike Nelson. Mike, this is Mala. I'm at the Coast Guard station. Mrs. Anderson will be ready for you in a moment. They asked me to come down here. Don't go without me. Mala, I told you before, this is no job for you. Now stay home, huh? A body was washed up near Laurent Cliff. They want me to identify it. I have a right to go with you, Mike. Doug was my husband. The whale killed him. I've got to see that thing dead. Mrs. Anderson. 
Mala, please. Be intelligent about this, huh? Mike, you've got to wait for me. This way, please. Mala. Couldn't talk her out of coming along. This is no trip for a woman. Now, we all charged the boat yesterday. Could do the same today. Let's shove off. Before she gets here, huh? Right. Doug. Oh, I'm sorry to have to put you through this. Must have been the man who was knocked off the small boat yesterday. Goodbye, Lieutenant. I've got to hurry. Take him down to the morgue. That's where they'll be coming up, right down there. You want to be able to cover that spit of rocks, too. I've seen them come up there sometimes. I don't know, that's kind of far. Almost 100 feet. This way, it's no more than 50. Well, anyway, this is where most of them will be. And this is where the killer will be, too, sooner or later. Because he'll try to slaughter them all. Hey. Something heading in this way, coming fast. Take a look. Over this way, little. About 250 yards out. You see him? Seals, hundreds of them. Yeah, and you're just looking at the middle of the parade. Look over here. They're the leaders. Boy, they sure are in a hurry to get out of the water. Yeah, they're scared. The killer whale? Yeah, there he is. Oh, you can never mistake that fin. About six feet high and curved like a sword. Herring takes the kelp, the seal takes the herring, and the killer whale takes the seal, and we take the killer whale. Just listen to them. Boy, they sure are scared. Yeah. They know the killer's out there. That one's sure acting kind of strange. Stand waiting for the killer to attack. And that's what he's going to do. Just watch, right out there. There. There he goes. Psychological warfare. Boy, look at them panic. Fear drives him right off the rocks and into his jaws. He 
He's coming in closer now. You're going to wait till you get a shot broadside, aren't you? Yeah. Good. And to fin that high out of the water, you got to place that harpoon about three feet below the waterline, don't you think? Yep. Oh, well, you sure is coming in all right. Fin's coming up higher. He's only about 150 feet out now. Don't fire into it. Hold it. That's Mal, isn't it? Mal! Revenge was complete, but nothing could replace Doug. The sea had taught us another of its costly lessons. Hello there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. You know, three-fifths of the world is covered by the sea, and how little most of us know about that underwater world. Go below with us again next week, huh? For another thrilling adventure in Sea Hunt. <laughs>